Good evening, residents of the town of Sunderland. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Board of Selectmen. It, November 28th, 2016. It's a Monday. After Thanksgiving. And we're all here. That's pretty right. damn good. That's not a bad thing. <clears throat> all right. So, first up, Board of Assessors tax classification hearing. Teresa, shoot. Okay. Teresa, Teresa is our assessor's administrative assistant. And assessors Mike Skrivitsky, Jim Kowalik, and what's that lady behind you? Mary Ann Kowalik are here. Nice. As well. Shoot, yeah. Teresa. All right. So, uh, this year I prepared a PowerPoint to just so that everybody can see what we're talking about. So, hopefully, all will go well here. Uh, first page is just a typical uh, historical home we have in town right on North Main Street. And so, this is our classification hearing. The purpose of the classification hearing is, according to Chapter 40, uh, Section 56, allows the shift in the tax burden between property classes. This does not change the total tax levy for the community. It simply determines the share to be borne by each class. So this would be called shifting the burden. The share of the levy for the commercial, <coughs> industrial, and personal property classes, known as CIP, may be increased by up to 50% as long as the residential and open space classes raise at least 65% of what they would have raised without the shift. The purpose of the hearing, okay, we had that. All right, so now uh, basically only 30% of towns in Massachusetts have the shift. And it's usually towns that have a uh, large industrial commercial uh, base to make it worthwhile. And in Franklin County, we have Rowe, Irving, and Montague, and those all have a power station. power station. So Irving has Northfield Mountain, Rowe has the former nuclear plant, and then Bear Montague Swamp. has their own, and they have Bear Swamp also. Yeah. So that gives you an idea. In uh, Hampshire County, Hadley and Northampton do not. So it's not just, you know, if you have a lot of stores, it's more... It's more in, industrial, really, exactly. than commercial. So overview of the revaluation classification process. Every three years up to this year, assessments must be at 100% fair market value and certified and audited by the Mass Department of Revenue. However, this year, the Munic Municipal Modernization Act, which was signed August 9, 2016 by Governor Baker, increased to, to five years. So Sunderland's next reval will not be until 2022. So we get a little break. But every year, the assessors must make interim adjustments to be at least 100% fair market value, also certified by Mass Department of Revenue. So this just shows you the four classes of property, and I picked properties in town. We have the residential, we have commercial, industrial, and we also have personal property. So the CIP would be where the shift would be, if we were going to do that. So this is a chart I prepared. I'm not going to go through all the figures, but you can look at it pretty quickly and realize that it really doesn't make a lot of sense to do the shift. So what I did is I prepared the average residential, commercial, and industrial 2016 fiscal 16 value of the property. And then it shows you what the taxes would be at 100%, down to 90%, 85%, 80%, and then 75%. So it doesn't really do that much to the residential, but it makes the industrial and commercial just totally out of whack and really wouldn't want to do that to your commercial and industrial. So then we have figures um, about the values from 16 and 17 and without going through every line, basically the bottom line is all the classes went up about 2.34% <coughs> in value. Uh, we have a little we have the amount that we need to raise. Uh, we did get an increase in state aid. So actually the levy only is going up 0.09%. Uh, and if approved, the tax rate will actually go down from 1466 to 1434. So to recap, uh, the values went up about 2.34%. <coughs> the amount to be raised is 0 0.09, tax rate would go down 2.8. So as long as that's approved, that's what the rate would be, and the Board of Assessors recommends we stay with a single tax rate. And then it just shows you some different values. 
This is just to show you trends. So you can see not, there's not a lot of movement between uh, residential, commercial, and industrial. The commercial and industrial are pretty much stable, and there's a very slight increase in the value of the residential property in the last four years. And then in closing, this is our historic tax rate. So uh, we met with the water district at 6 o'clock, and their proposed rate would be 58 cents, which is down 2 cents from last year. And then our real estate would be uh, 1434 down from 1466. So as long as everything's approved by Department of Revenue, that would be what the figures are moving forward. And that is the end. <laughs> Questions? Scott? A uh, couple of questions, if I could, Mr. Chair. Thanks for the thanks for the PowerPoint, first of all, and thanks, assessors, for the work that you guys do getting into here. Um, under the Municipal Moderniz Modernization Act, is it the assessor's, assessor's prerogative to move to five years or to no. keep it free? No, that was the governor's decision Great. to try to just streamline the whole process because they had a big um, early out for all of you know the state employees yep. and they have a big reduction in Department of Revenue yep. so in order to be able to handle that instead of doing it every three years they're moving it to every five sure so that would just take the burden off of Department of Revenue to come up with all this work and, and the reason I asked the question isn't necessarily about my my you know sorrow for the loss of the Department of Revenue it's actually about revenue forecasting at the municipal level Every five years, a jump could go like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, and then it becomes really difficult for municipal budgeting. So, thanks well, for sticking to three years. Yeah. No, it's five. It's moved to five. It's not an option. So, are you not doing incremental assessing throughout the course of the five now? No, we will. We continue to do every year. Yeah. Nothing's changed that way. It's just the revaluation process. Got it. It's going from three to five and it's statewide. So, so there's a little more involved in the revaluation process than just the annual um, assessing. You just have to gather more data and the state just has to approve it. It's not really changing all that much. It's just less paperwork. Okay. It's not going to really affect the town that much. So the risk could be in uh, year four or year five, the town value goes in a movement by the DOR. I guess potentially, but I don't really think it would affect the town that much because every okay. year we have to get approved. I understand. Yeah. Great. Yeah, every, every year we're going to make little adjustments. Just yep. to, you know, keep up with it. That, that fifth year, we're not going to see a huge increase. It's okay. So the last question would be on the summary sheet. It's important to bear in mind <coughs> that the residential total value is not the total tax bill. That's total valuation. Correct. So people watching this aren't going to say, well, wait a minute, it no. went up or down by blank. They're going to say, they will see the valuation Correct. move accordingly. Great. Correct. That's all. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Any questions, Dave? No, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, and um, and I, I, I would just go one further. I just think we have a little increase. There's a little home building going on, remodeling, valuations are going up, which hasn't been that way for the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. So although our budget went up this past year, our ability, our, our, our total valuation of the town has gone up so that we're able to actually reduce the tax rate this year and we get a little more money from the state yeah so so bottom line is our tax rate is going down but the total dollars that we're taxing is going up a little bit correct so, so for the average homeowner the average homeowner the bills will be going down a little bit unless you made improvements to your house like new roofs Actually, a new roof is not an improvement. That's just a maintenance issue. Yeah. Improvement would be like new kitchen, like new addition, uh, addition, yeah. outbuilding, garage, swimming pool, swimming pool, deck for the high dive, yeah. wine yeah. cellars, all yeah. those luxury wine, wine cellars, yeah. in, right? cigar humidor. <laughs> exactly. <right? laughs> well, plus if you look at the rates too, we're still well below. We were seventeen oh eight back in ninety eight. Mm. So. Right. 
And if you look at surrounding towns, it's mm. pretty favorable rate too. Yep. Okay. So at this time, I need a motion from a member of the board to maintain a single rate classification as recommended by the assessors of the town of Sundown. Uh, motion. I'll okay. second. Any discussion? I, I think uh, Teresa's and the assessor's handout basically tells us, shows us why, in solid numbers, why having a split race rate would not be advantageous for the town of Sunball yep. at, at this time. Correct. So all those in favor of a single tax rate so that the assessors continue their uh, process of getting the tax rate certified, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have a 3-0 vote. Assessors, you want to add anything? Um, I think the bill's probably going out a little before Christmas. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God for that split timing, right? Um, Jimmy and uh, assessors, thank you for the presentation. Teresa did a nice job. But I think if anybody wants, um, see, something like that I think should be put on our webpage. Mm -hmm. I can easily do that. Yeah. And, and so someone can actually go in and look at, at what and how the numbers in the town are generated. And they can look at the. So that's going to be on the tax I can, on the webpage. I can easily do that, yeah, because I maintain the page. And that'll be on the under the assessor. Load up the PowerPoint under the mm -hmm. assessor. So you go to townofsunderland.us and you can get this presentation. Teresa will have it on the next week or so. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Welcome. Thanks. 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 Next up, we have the town clerk Wendy Hool is going to come talk to us about public records law records access officers madam town clerk make it quick got it <laughs> um 20 grand two years quick next <coughs> the public records law did change and as of january 1st cities and towns are expected to do a whole lot more with the requests and the maintaining of records. Can so, we go to jail? Well. Could you go to jail? We, yeah. No, I'm not going okay. to jail. Because we're going to do something about it so that nobody goes to jail. Um, one of the biggest things that we can do beforehand is to appoint what they call RAOs, Records Access Officer. Yeah. And Sherry and I have, have been really talking about this and seeing what will fit best for Sunderland. How can we implement this with as little change to what we're already doing, but also making sure that we're, we're doing it. Um, and it makes sense to appoint chairs and clerks of committees, um, department heads as RAOs. And with that, um, Lauren Goldberg kind of has um, deemed another position like super RAO. And Sherry and I talked about that today. Um, and we know for this to work, Sherry and I need to work together seeing as though um, any requests that come in are not going to be any of my appointees if I don't appoint. Mm -hmm. um, and s some of the requests I'm not going to have any knowledge about where Sherry might. So we thought that Sherry would make the most sense to be the super RAO. But, you know, we would, we would work together and because it's it's going to be quite burdensome. Could be potentially, and, yeah. And not only um, for Sherry, but for our boards and committees. And and somewhere along the line, we've got to understand with these new laws, with the open meeting law, ethics, and and now the public request, we're expecting a lot out of our volunteers. And um, you know we. We also kept that, we we're trying to keep that in mind too, that we want to make it as easy for them as possible. One of the things we already do is, you know, minutes. You know, we request that boards and committees <coughs> keep, 
give me their minutes. Um, so that if public requests come in, then I can handle that. Yeah. And they don't have to go through and do it. Um, so that's, that's the biggest thing that we can do right now to get ready for that. Um, we do need to come up with a policy, but they haven't set the regulations yet. So once they do that, we um, will have to come up with a policy. I'm trying to think. I did. I did write some notes down. Some other things. Look <laughs> at some other things now. Um, to make this successful is we're hoping that there's this piece of software that will link us all together. Um, we have to use the website um, to link us all together so that the super RAO knows all the requests that are coming in yeah. and, and making sure they're being fulfilled. And the software sounds good. We just haven't seen it yet. Is it like a tracking <coughs> system basically for yeah, the request? It does. So it'll it, log everything. It will let yeah. you know What's when the name of it? it's due. <coughs> you'll, you'll be able to pull up a little bit class. Is that the one? Okay, so, um, but we haven't seen it yet, and they're going to do some webinars. <coughs> <these weeks. coughs> so we're hoping that's good. Um, the big one is is our our record. And us, like many, almost all the towns Boy, okay. are a mess. You know, they're just all over. We don't know where they are. And that makes fulfilling a request really challenging and a lot of hours. So, However, we are working on that as well. We did have um, King Information <coughs> Systems come in and do an assessment of our records mm -hmm. um, for cataloging them and putting them in order in setting up a, a, a system going forward um, so that we won't have that kind of time constraints. Yep. Um, and they're going to be meeting with Wendy and I on Wednesday to submit their proposal and assessment. So we'll have a, an idea of you know cost and time and those things for um, a possible grant or um, capital CPA. request, CPA. We'll yep. look at different options. So. We're on it. We're trying to figure out how best to handle, I think, um, what we're thinking for logical next steps would be um, to have the board appoint um, the positions, um, RAOs, the chairs, <coughs> the super RAO and, and RAO, <coughs> and um, just kind of roll with it as, we, as we're getting new information. Yeah. And I think as we go down more in time, a lot of stuff will be more stuff will be available online <coughs> as mm -hmm. we put it up there. So that if you're getting requests that don't go way back, maybe they'll get a lot of it online, which would help. And that they they said yeah. I, we really, you know, again, it just everything seems to come down to money. Um, we really need an IT person <coughs> that that can do that. You yeah. know, right now um, Cindy does it, and. She's doing other things, and this would be a whole lot of information going on, you know. Yeah. Um, but, but that's what we should do. We should yeah. have all that. Because at some point you can, like you, you do like the step that you did where you organize everything that you've got now, and then you, Just and again, it gets it back to money. Forward. Right. You know, or you can, if you have a little funding, you can say, all right, well, maybe we'll start putting older things, like older minutes online as we have time or money. Mm -hmm. But that's that's always a resource Meeting, and money issue. An unfunded mandate. I it had is. that right here, actually. I wrote that right there. It is. Oh, yeah. in, in city, um, some of the uh, Woburn seems to, if that's how you say it. Oh, the town of Woburn? Yeah, yes. yeah out east, yeah. Um, it's kind of heading, <coughs> heading something with, um, to, to see, with the auditor to see if we could get money back. Now, do we have to rent that software or license it or ourselves? Like, we're paying for that I software, do, Yeah, right? we would, we That's would pay it for it. But, you know, it's, it sounds really good, but that's all I know is it sounds. You won't know mm -hmm. until you actually use it as to how, yeah. how efficient and we, it is. And we don't yeah. even, like right now, even know how 
it works at at all. Yeah. Except for what they. I'm sure. Today. We'll, I mean, maybe it'll help with some other things. You know, as you look at it, I'm looking at like the types of things. And maybe we get some other benefit out of it too. Who knows? You know, yeah. I don't know, but. Well, yeah. If you could add on, like maybe the inspectors could. Yeah, add something on like that, their right? Stuff too. I, you know. I don't know, but yeah. The or more some efficiencies, can... maybe. Right. Yeah. So you're not. So we're not ready to do uh, appointments tonight. You're just making a recommendation to think about, or what do you want? Yeah, to do? we should have it in place for January one. Mm -hmm. So if, if you want to wait until your next okay. meeting, or yeah. or time so, to get it out to the, the appointees to. So All right. So give us burden. give us the list next, and 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 also uh, I was going to say if you're going to do this, then you're going to have to talk to those chairs and uh, clerks and make sure that they're schooled on what they got to do. Also, I, I don't. I, I don't. And again, I just, I mean, it sounds easy to make these people responsible, but at the same time, it's very difficult. I mean, they're, so you can make, you know, they're not full-time employees, so it's hard for them to get the access. Some of them may come in once a month. Yeah, right. So. Well, that, you know, and I did make the plea again, and the same plea I made with the open meeting law um, with Bob Ritchie today was, you know, these people are volunteers, but they have families, they have jobs, and you know, they're on the Conservation Commission, they want to do stuff with conservation, not all this um, well, the administrative that, overhead. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, it, and you know, even with the minutes, you know, sometimes, you know, when some boards and committees think they have to give us minutes, you know, it's, that's already too much. Um, but by giving us minutes, we're really helping them out, and, and we're helping the the consistency of the paperwork of permanent records for those towns. Because there's a lot of committees in the '80s that you can't go back I, and find I, their minutes. I just think it's yeah. sometimes it's difficult for committees and boards, especially volunteers. I, I know when we were on the planning board, just knowing when someone puts an A and R in that starts the clock at 21 days, or it used to be 21 days. So all of a sudden, if you someone had to be coming in almost once a week to see what they have in for A and R's, because you'd have to deal with it, so it, it makes it more cumbersome. Yeah, okay. And I think we're aware. I think you know we we do want to try to make it so it's not quite so bad on the boards and committees. And most requests are for minutes. Yeah. And you know we we do have I, some really good committees that send their minutes in all the time so hmm. a lot of times they don't even know there's a request but we're able to fulfill it here because we had the information uh, question yeah I was just actually as this conversation was going on going on mr. chair I wonder if this isn't one of a uh, multi-legged um, stool or table that is under the umbrella of communications, global communications. This is records, right? This is turned yep. into an extension <coughs> of some kind of communications uh, part-time position for the town in total. We have active communications from department heads, right? Think about that from an uh, emergency planning perspective. Think about that from the news organizations that may contact the town administrator. Now we're talking about records with super RAOs. Are we talking about one leg going into someone who can be contacted for those kinds of things? We're relatively lean here in town. Maybe it's right? something that we look at regionalizing. Think about that. We, we are resource. about to begin appointing the next round of appointees, including department heads as they reorganize, uh, as uh, committees and commissions as they reorganize. Mm -hmm. Do we have to have every one of those with a responsibility as a records keeper? It's kind of like, it's like data management and communication. It kind of all falls under one umbrella. Sure. And maybe that's something we look at sure. drawing with IT into a shared resource among, because while we may not be able to support a whole person, you know, you add up a couple of towns together or three and, you know, or the school district or something like that. And, you know, maybe we look at doing that. Understood. And yeah. if I could just close with it, you know, I wrote here at the very top of the page, efficiency or unfunded mandate? Question mark, question mark. Yeah, yeah both. Is it really efficient? Yeah, they're, they're both. <laughs> no. yeah, is, is it efficient? Ah, well, could it, be it, it with could be time. Right. Money. Yeah. I mean, nobody, nobody here 
could take that project on and still do their job. Totally get it. So our option is that we're going to pay <coughs> quickly and efficiently. Right, right. But that's that's the rollout. <coughs> but that's the rollout. <laughs> that's not the maintenance year five from exactly. now, year six from now, year seven from now. That's different. Yeah. Well, it's your I, I will say that that King um, information will come back every year <coughs> and, and update. And I, I don't remember what Montague has done it. And we went up for a field it, trip. It, it was very that. impressive. They kind of give you a, an, a, an action plan, essentially, yep. too, right? So. And I don't remember what it was for them to come out mm -hmm. every year, but they just take their boxes and then they decide whether it goes or stays. And it will help us weed out a lot of things that we don't need also. I think there's been articles in the paper it's, about it, too, I think. I recall. <coughs> is that archival you're describing right now, or is that on an annual basis? Well, it's they, both. It's our archival. They, it's yeah. retention, too. Right. Okay. So we have meetings throughout the course of 2016. That this system is rolled out five years ago. That information is fed real time into this system. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, it, this takes your actual documents, mm -hmm. and you know they'll put them in boxes, mm -hmm. archival boxes, and. You know, some stuff will go in the vault, some stuff will go upstairs, but they'll give you a map, and if somebody wants payroll from 1980, you know, you can look at the map, and you can know right where to go. We'll know what day, what section, yeah. what, you know, what box. As long as somebody puts it back in the right spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's right. It's a, right, it's a way of tracking and organizing all the stuff that you physically have to archive. And, and that's a way to track the requests for information, right? Right. And, yeah. you know, the, technically, every cities and towns should have been always doing this. Right. It's, so it is unfunded, but it was required of us, too. It's just that. No, we had to have it. We didn't have to know where it was. Right. <laughs> we didn't. Yeah. Right. Well, you I know, was just going to ask that question. Yeah. Well, there's a difference. I, I, there is. I, I going to go there. There's a, go difference, there's a yep. difference being able to have that information and finding it and, 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 you know, finding it in a reasonable amount of time. So if someone comes in and they want, they want to know about their employment history when they worked on the highway department in the summer 1972, yeah. I, I mean, it's like... Where do okay. you start? Right. Well, it, it is a it, and and this is it has happened in a town. Mm -hmm. is, is it is it something that you know? Well, I'm retiring next week and I need to finish up. Well, did you need to know? Shouldn't you come in? You know, being a responsible citizen, shouldn't you come in three weeks ago or a month ago instead of coming in now and wanting it? And <laughs> I will not. say where we are on the upper hand is we do have laser fish. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. We're able to fulfill that request a little yeah. faster. A yeah. little faster, but that's because we have the selectmen minutes on there. Mm -hmm. But you know, we not all the boards and committees minutes are on right. laser feed. Uh, so, I mean, that's one piece of the puzzle that we can at least say we have. And, and I just want to know when can you throw something out, and you're going to tell me never. No, it depends. Depends. Huh? It depends. Like minutes are permanent forever. You know, vital. So if I go in the, if I go in the vault, I'm gonna find minutes from seventeen eighteen? You should yes. I'm gonna go and look there. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm better be able to read should. the whereas and therefore. They, they have, they <laughs> you may not understand them, but you can find <laughs> them. Under the town Should I come with you? That could be pretty interesting actually. But it is yeah. the election stuff, you know, state elections you have to keep it for two years. And you can get so it rid of it. Depends on what it is. Unused ballots, yeah. you can get rid of under 30 days. Okay, so, so no I, I mean, all, all different things have all different time. Us, you know, different the census that I do, yep. you have to keep it for a year. You know, okay. so not everything has to stay permanent, but. Is there anything else you want to add? No. <laughs> I think I have everything. All right. So we'll just. I mean, I appreciate you bringing it. I mean, we, we've heard about this RAOs and super RAOs, and, and I guess you're going to be probably telling us that sometime we're going to have to spend more money to keep a better filing system, right? 
I think I, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think I hinted I think to that. Expect that. So you think you <laughs> dropped the hint? I think I dropped it on the software too. I think I. You did that too. So do you want to more reinforce that? Or are you happy with your dropping? I, yeah, I. You know, I'm. I'm hoping that the software can go through like the budget, um, and the other is going to be more. And I'm hoping CPA. And Sherry might know of other grants or something, but CPA is the only thing that I thought we could fit into. We're just kind of talking okay. off the side about like some potential grants. <coughs> so our next meeting you'll have. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think Sherry did up. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <coughs> it's really nice. Yeah, and she put that. asterisks mm -hmm. for all those. Okay. That it applies. So it'd be positioned, not. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Tom Clark. Uh -huh. You're all done? Only if you are. Yeah, I'm all set. Are you? Mm -hmm. All right, we're all done. Good. You sure? Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Good night. Thanks. All right. Minutes of uh, 11, 14, 16 that we will need to keep for prosperity. <laughs> So I guess we will be, we are making history. Every time we come into this room, Every gentlemen, time. we are making history. Time to We're make history. We're converting the play tablets in another room in the back. We've got a scriptorium back there with a, about 30 monks. So uh, Super RAO, we have those. Do you get a cake? <coughs> no, a cake. No? Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> All right, so we have minutes. I request a motion that will be recorded for infinite. A motion. Infamy to do that. For infinity and beyond. Infamy is a little different, but I'll second the motion. Yeah, <laughs> motion for infinity and, and a second. beyond. So it says Buzz Lightyear. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We will keep this motion for infinity 3 0. All right, next up uh, Board of Selectmen updates. Mr. Bergeron? Uh, if I could, Mr. Chair, we had our kickoff meeting with the uh, police uh, union negotiation team this past Thursday, and uh, we set our meeting schedule for every other week uh, up until a scheduled completion of <coughs> March 15, 2017, which sounds crazy, but it's actually not that far away. And there go the horns. Um, that said, um, we are going to, we have agreed on the uh, rules and signed off on the rules. And our next meeting is a week from Thursday, at which point, um, just as in times past, the last three negotiations, uh, we'll be negotiating um, collaboratively, going through the contract. Uh, proposals item by item from each of the parties so it becomes a really a working living document good excellent anything else that's all mr. David uh, we're gonna be scheduling a personnel community meeting soon to start going over our salary reviews and all that other fun stuff that we uh, started last year so okay um, South County uh, senior center, um, the, the um, actually the town of Deerfield put a new floor in the uh, senior center, and it looks nice. amazingly good. Um, the uh, they got uh, uh, their uh, Christmas potluck that are coming up very shortly. Um, I mean, right now there's a, a, a multitude of things that are that are occurring at the senior center, so I'd highly recommend people. Uh, if, if you're interested and again it's not your grandmother's senior center so yeah. there's all kinds of things or grandfather there's all kinds of things that are going on over there now I would, I would highly encourage you to check out the the uh, schedule of events um, on the web pages um, or stop by and uh, and talk to uh, uh, Marlene who is a director or Sue who's the activities director and talk to them about the things that are going on. The uh, South County Board of Oversight had a meeting um, week before last. Um, we were informed by the town of Deerfield that Deerfield Academy, and probably the reporter knows more about this than I do, that the Deerfield Academy has 
um, said that they have money available and they are going to be building South County a, a building um, that will meet the needs of South County EMS going forward. So basically now we have to work with um, the South, the Board of Oversight has a negotiating team that's made up myself, Jonathan Edwards and Kip Camosa, and we're supposed to sit down and, and hash out what we think between the two sites, et cetera. So we will be meeting on that very shortly to be putting something together, but hopefully we will have um, a solution, permanent solution to the housing of South County EMS that will greatly uh, um, simplify a lot of things that have been making it very difficult. And, and again, it's not because of, it, it's because we're spread out over like four places right now. We got where we have ambulances in Whiteley, Sunderland, at the South Deerfield Fire. Zach has an office over in the, the, the Deerfield Town Office Building, so it just makes it hard to make things happen. So, hopefully, we'll be we're closing on we're closing that gap soon, um, and we'll be able to move forward. Um, I think that's it for me. Also, Sherry, Tom. Oh, one other thing. Is Sherry, have you put together a uh, budget notice to send out to department heads yet? Mm -hmm. Excellent. I will issue that on probably tomorrow, Thursday, if that's okay. Excellent. Thank you, Sherry. I did um, just ask them as in past to level fund. There's a lot of unknowns right now with the new administration. The federal money comes down to the state, and we're not really sure what's going to happen there. Um, state tax revenues <coughs> are short of what they were projected. Yep. Uh, they're going to look at them again in January. And uh, which is right about the time the governor's budget will come out. So um, I guess that's nothing new, same old. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Scott, any comments? Uh, no, that's fine, Mr. Chair. Okay. What else you got, Siri? Um, uh, we did receive a Maya risk management grant for $3,738 to update the town office building fire and alarm system. Uh, which was very timely. As you know, we've been having a lot of trouble um, with the alarm system here. Um, unfortunately, we, we applied for the full 15000 um, but there was more demand than there was money, so um, we're happy that we did receive <coughs> um, the grant for the upgrade here um, in the town office building. We didn't receive funding for the public safety complex um, in the card access that we were looking for here in at the public safety complex. Um, the Ford truck that we had put out to bid, the 1983, mm -hmm. um, the bidder has withdrawn his bid. Um, I did notify the second high bid and he's still interested. Okay. So if uh, the board is okay with that, um, we could award the bid to Greg Waskowski for $333.33. Motion. Uh, so moved because it's a really cool number. <laughs> <laughs> second. Motion made and second to uh, sell off that old Ford truck. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Um, and I also I solicited quotes for the lease financing of the new truck for the highway department. Yep. Um, we received two quotes, one from tax exempt leasing. Uh, the terms are 2.99% over seven years. Uh, the second was from Mercedes Benz Financial. Uh, their quote was for 3.16% uh, over seven years. Uh, payments are annual in arrears with the first payment due one year from the lease signing. Uh, the annual payment for tax exempt lease, which was the lower one, is $27,206.48. Uh, as you recall, uh, town meeting authorized the $30,295 uh, for the first year, uh, which brings the amount of the financing down to $169,568. Good. So if if the board is um, in agreement, the award would be to tax exempt leasing. Uh, and they're in fine standing? Yes, they are. Okay. I've used them in pass um, for other vehicles, so. Yeah, move to, uh, move to accept the uh, procurement officer's recommendation for tax exempt leasing, leasing for the uh, purchase of the highway truck. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. 
Treasurer. Um, town Council has drafted the lease for the office space here at the town office building for your review. There was just um, one question, clarification of the hours operation here. And I did send an email to Chris. They would need access to the building after our normal hours. They yeah. have um, hours on Fridays. And they um, have hours um, some nights until 9 o'clock or so. So if that's okay, I'll just have her revise the um, agreement to reflect that. That yes, sure. makes sense. And then if it's okay, I'll send it off to FCAT for review. Yep. You want a motion on that? Yes. Uh, motion. 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 Uh, second the motion to move into the um, lease agreement with FCAT. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. Three zero. Uh, North Main Street reconstruction. We um, received a quote for um, additional work. I'm going to be uh, working with Brian and CHA to look at um, the what's been built to date to see what we have available for funding for that as well. And I'll report back to the board at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, OPEM Trust, we've had the three presentations. I don't know if you're ready to uh, make an award to one of the companies or if you want to hold off. I'm very happy to talk to our treasure collector okay. and see if she wants to sit down and discuss. Mm -hmm. I think, I mean, it's really, her opinion matters a lot. Okay. And I um, also met with Susan to take a look at the um, existing credit card policy and to revise it <coughs> to reflect the new debit card policy. The town no longer has a credit card. Um, I guess that was done away with some time ago, and we've run into some instances where it would really need be... something, yeah. Um, so um, Susan reached out to Unibank and they have a debit card that's available. And so we wanted to have a process in place. So um, I have that for your review as well. But what we thought would work best is to have the department head um, submit a request for approval and have the um, funding Transfer certified. The and, and then once I've signed off and the accountant signed off, has Susan move the funds into um, that account in a debit card format yeah is that practical I, I guess that's what they're doing now um, mm. the credit card is kind of it's a lot harder to trace and there's mm -hmm. interest in all of those Understood. things and it's usually tied to someone's social security number or an, e or an EIN or taxes yeah, yeah. <coughs> and mm. so this is not Again, we won't use it a whole lot, but there are instances sometimes um, equipment breaks down and if, if you need to rent a car, you're not renting yeah. a car without some kind of card, right? It has to be well, understood with it, but with a, a, a debit card, you know, I'll, I'll um, defer the treasure collector but with a debit card format. There hasn't been an existing balance. But that's that's why it works because then it's then you can transfer that money over and you're not going to whether over, it's from the police gonna, account right, so you're not going to exceed that amount so right. it's slower. I I, I, yes. get, I understand the mechanism clearly. Yeah. However, I would suggest that the convenience doesn't necessarily allow the required agility for use. Yeah. Well, it's better than what we have now. I yeah. totally get yeah. that. Nothing right now. But we'll say. Yep. I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, right? Right. I used to then work we'll, with a guy who we, we rolled out, uh, you know, uh, pre-approved credit cards with a fixed limit, and uh, it was pretty clear uh, if you extended that limit or did something, you know, nefarious, you lost your job. That was pretty easy. The auditors picked that up, like, immediately within 30 days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and we had... Pro cards at the university. Pro cards were totally get it. an answer, an answer to all <laughs> purchasing requirements. All it, was. It, it was convenient. You needed right. something. You went to yep. Home Depot yep. and or wherever you need to, or EJ Prescott or wherever. Sure. Um, it ended up not being as Understood. universal 
It's not that easy. Yeah. Right. But, I, but I think what happens, what, what's going to happen now is that now you're going to have to, you're going to say, somebody's going to say, okay, you need a credit card. Well, how much is going to cost? It's going to cost <coughs> $5,000. One dollar, and you put the five thousand one dollar in it, and they can spend the five thousand one dollar, and the Get cotton one. treasurer is being able to track it. So we'll see. But you're right; it's not is agile. Yes, not as agile. Definitely not agile. But okay. huh. all right, that's fine. We'll see what happens. And there'll be an accompanying policy with that. Yeah. Yeah. Just get yeah. that. What else you got? And that's it. I'll see if Susan can come to the next meeting and talk about the OPIB. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, next, uh, public comment. Okay. Someday somebody's going to have a comment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> bound to happen at some point. All right. New business resignation. All right. This is uh, to the Board of Selectmen from Richard Lepaca. This email serves as Richard Lepaca's Sunderland Library Trustee Tender Resignation, effective January 1st, 2017. <coughs> and Richard writes, it's been my pleasure and honor to serve as a member on the Board of Trustees. Sincerely, Richard Lepaca. So, <coughs> uh, so a motion to... No. It really goes to the town clerk. Mm -hmm. Not so that's true. It yeah. goes, this is notice. It goes to the library. This is just notice. And they yeah. do. They do have. Yeah. I'd like to thank Dick for. Yeah. He's among one of his many. Yeah. I mean, this efforts. is uh, greatly appreciated. Okay. So this being an inter election, do we have to have notice from the trustees if they plan on appointing after yes. the first? Beth sent an email, Beth Barry, and she said she was meeting with the trustees and would get back to the board as soon Great. as they do. So we just have to put post it on the TV, joint, TV yeah. and the website and so, we, so that's what we, we do because we, we have, have to and we have a joint meeting after. Can we have to have a joint meeting Correct. and yeah. Okay. I like that. Anything else? Comments? Uh, the only comment I would make, Mr. Chair, is as we talk about this um, records access officer across the breadth of our appointment list, a quick tally shows that under the appointed boards and committees, that could be as many as 25 names with additional mm -hmm. responsibilities, and under employees, an additional eight with excuse me, eight employees with added responsibility. As we talk about funded or unfunded mandates, whether it's the migration of records, the record keeping process, the collating of records of historical importance, you know, to notice that we can simply have a law changed, right, and mm -hmm. not impact municipalities. There are some duplicate names between elected and appointed, but let's just say for the town of Sunderland, that's 25 people now impacted as records authorization officers, well, potentially said, depending on the structure that's chosen. In, in right? some, I mean, in some people just some people just say it's a town clerk. I totally get that. Yep. You know, there, there's, there's I've seen other ways I've seen recommendations it. Yep. that say just yep. right. just Hopefully make the it clerk the town the, clerk. Right. Yep. I, I, or I, I, the town clerk make the recommendations, and I understood. I raise that only to shed light on the fact that even though we practice the best steps in good governance and we pride ourselves on that, and we have efficiencies that we talk about. In our discussion tonight, we had the Department of Revenue with a downsizing at the state level now looking at five-year valuations, and a records-keeping law that has impacted 25 potential people in our own town. To me, there's a, there's a, there's a disparate difference between those two things. A little bit. There's not a lot of efficiency when you lay people off and stretch out a required task and then you heap a task on 25 other people who are all volunteers, by the way. I think that's what the town clerk yep. was trying to say tonight. It's just, just saying. I, I, I think that's what she was yep. trying to say. I, I, I you know, Not I, to, I, mm -hmm. I think, I mean, to me, the hardest thing from doing this for a number of years, the hardest thing is getting people, committees, boards, commissions, whatever we want to call them, is to get minutes in a timely fashion good point i think personally this is just another way to ensure 
minutes are being received. Mm -hmm. And 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 I I think I think that's the strongest that I read. I think that's and 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 I'll tell you the town clerk or the town administrator can I mean you really can't police another elected board to ensure that they get you the the minutes. Right. I mean it, it's a I mean they don't want to give you minutes. They don't they don't give you minutes. I mean. Only so much you, um, you're not going to go to their meeting. Sure. I mean, you can go to their meeting sure. and you can ask for the minutes, but sure. and, and I don't think anybody is malicious. I just think that I, I would say, echoing it, that point, as someone who has been scribe at meetings and has, has <coughs> failed over a couple of subsequent meetings to get those minutes formalized, the, the mm -hmm. there, there is this like, yeah, everybody can scratch down notes, but <coughs> the formalizing part, put that into I, right I understand that completely, and frankly, I sit here guilty of that. They get there, <laughs> but they don't always get there in 10 minutes or 10 days or one meeting. Well, I also personally think that sometimes what's required by law in minutes and and what we what we have some sometimes we write down too much in our minutes because mm -hmm. sometimes people want to make the minutes are uh are they're not really minutes they're they're verbatim like a what, transcript what, as a transcript of the meeting yeah. and they're not really transcripts um and that's that's the hard part so you have to balance I mean somebody should look at the minute like Mr. Chair over here, Mr. Chair 1A gets up and says something about whatever. It's not necessarily that that's important to go into the minutes. Right. You just need to know you discuss that topic. Yes. Yeah, you don't have to know what item. went back and forth. Right. You don't need to know who Mr. Tr Chair 1A is. And, and you don't need to know what Sleckman on, 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 the, on the board is saying what thing. I mean... Sometimes it is recorded that way, but it's just the general tenor of the discussion. So someone can look at it and understand what's being said. Not necessarily who said it, but so I, I don't know. I, I think you're Scott. You're so right. I I think what what the town clerk tried to do today is trying to make people aware and of of this new law. And unfortunately, the best way to do it is to to give that responsibility because if somebody else is going to do the response it's somebody else's responsibility I'm, well, I don't have to worry right. about it yeah, right? I, I raise the point not in condemnation of the of the requirement oh, no. it's like it's really important that everybody kind of becomes aware of you know what good governance is required maybe, that's important maybe we think about creating a template that yep. people can use yep and just shoot it out to people and say hey if you're going to do minutes take it this way and then maybe you know I don't, we're gonna have to figure out a way to funnel them in, or even just when you when you're putting your agenda together. What I you just look at each agenda item and summarize what happened under that. Any votes that are recorded, yeah. Yeah. you know, and sometimes verbatim maybe. Sometimes you might have to put you know it, you but might, yeah depending That's on a, right you have I, to look at the topic. And, I've yeah, always I, been told to kind of stay away from that. Mm -hmm. kind of it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> because it also then it gets into your interpretation of what the person was saying. Great point. Right, as opposed and, and, to and great and, point. and and, and mm -hmm. if anybody's been paying attention to the minutes that were taken at Amherst School or Amherst Regional yep. Union Twenty, whatever their union number yep. is, I, I mean, people vehemently, vehemently disagree with the minutes that were taken and what they said. So. Yeah. Now, were they right or wrong? I mean, well, they voted to accept the minutes. So, and now, so I'm just saying that there's a fine line. Mm -hmm. um, when when we accept the minutes, a town town meeting has a minutes right. taken. Yep. And we don't we don't address every they, those yeah. minutes don't address every single person that stands up and has a point. Mm -hmm. That's what the recording's for. If you really want it, you go back to the recording. Well, you know, if you need like a on. transcript in that sense. Yeah, so I, 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 again, I just, I understand why. Do they all need to go to the town clerk once they're? But they all got to go to the right. keeper of the records. So, so. Yeah. Right. And and I understand. I, I mean, the the there's there's we have we have a, a responsibility to make sure that uh, what the business that occurred at a meeting we have we have responsibility to make sure people can understand what that is. Mm -hmm. That being said, um, motion, motion. motion to adjourn.
terrible, I guess, second. <laughs> terrible to me. I guess, second a tacit no, huh? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. <coughs> Sherry, 736, and we will be out.